in Yamaha and our R&D and testing departments too. And you got Robbie Raynard out here trying to give you a title <laughs> on the big bikes. Not, yeah. not one of the young guys anymore. No, <laughs> no, but uh, it was a kind of a cool thing. We just saw a guy win a PW50. Yes. Now we're going to hopefully see uh, Robbie secure another championship on his 450. Excellent. We'll bookend it. We'll go racing here in a second. But, Donnie, just a chance you guys are still hanging out over there at Yamaha, right? Oh, yeah. We're over there supporting all our amateurs. Uh, our trackside support's up and running. And uh, we're just glad to be here supporting all our Yamaha riders. And 2015 bikes on display? 2015 are on display, and we have the Yamaha Talent Show tonight, so we're still participating here at the ranch until we uh, get the checkered flag, flag in the final moto. Absolutely. We've still got a whole other day racing tomorrow. You guys will be here. Thanks, Donnie. Stop okay. by. Thanks, thanks for having me. He's going to have to head down to that podium area, potentially, and maybe help out if uh, Raynard grabs his championship. So uh, thanks to everyone who joined us here at uh, Intermission at uh, Loretta Lynn Ranch, and look at that. Raynard has put that Yamaha out front, and I'll tell you, Raynard's known for a lot of things that are great. The riding style is awesome. There's great talent and, obviously, enthusiasm for this sport. But I don't think these starts have necessarily been the focus or the positive of Raynard. But this week, he has been nailing those things. Maybe it's the Yamaha. I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> but he has been excellent at the starts this week, and that has really helped him. Jimmy Pavone got the uh, Bell Helmets whole shot, but Raynard able to quickly get around him. And it doesn't matter if it's 1992 and Raynard's down here as the hot shot coming out of the amateur ranks, or if it's 2014, that guy has awesome style. And you're going to see it here as he's headed to the Thor sweeper in just a moment in the 67. He is awesome to watch ride a bike, Rodney. He most certainly is. Pavoni back in the number two spot right now as it looks like Jimmy Evans has settled into the number three position as we kick things off here on lap number one. We'll see if he's able to hold the pace there or not. He's got company coming in right now from that 52 of Frenchy, as we like to call him. Gregory Palmer back there in the number four spot as he sets fifth in the championship points race coming into the final moto right now. Looking back to the number 45 machine, that's Robbie Skaggs. Skaggs running fifth at the moment. He finished, uh, well, looking at an eighth and a ninth, so a much better start to the uh, championship moto for this rider. Skaggs sits seventh in the points for the uh, championship right now. But again, it's uh, Rayner, Pavoni, Evans, Palmer, Skaggs, top five. Tony LaRusso back there in the number six spot as Brandon Jones opens up in seven. Sam Yanatelli, the number 35, is eighth, ninth place. Dennis Dooley coming up the holler there aboard the number 83. And John Boland, the number 85, rounding out the top 10 in the uh, end of lap number one. Then we got Edward Walston in 11, Philip Hayes in 12th, John Agent is 13th, Jeremy Parsons in 14th. Jeffrey Pape in the number 15 spot. Tony Wink, uh, I believe that's the uh, Pit Pass Radio guy out there uh, aboard the number 69. Birthday boy. B is it his birthday? Oh, yeah. I was talk yeah. talking with him up there. I think he's also representing Wise Co. Performance Pistons here this weekend, so good to see him out there. Uh, Alan Flanagan is uh, running in 17th place aboard the number 15. Frank Eckel is 18th. Mark Williams, uh, the 46th and 19th. And Timothy Castrone rounds out your top 20. There's Carl Scott back in the number 21 spot, but uh, as we look at the championship points breakdown, it would be Raynard, Pavoni, Evans overall right now, but still a long road to hoe as we are looking at a 20-minute moto to complete, and we are only a lap and a little more into that. About halfway is our leaders as Robbie Raynard making his way around and stretching things out. And Pavoni, pretty much the same thing. It's back in the number three, four, and five positions where we're starting to see things really heat up in this plus 35 class. And the kind of great, intense championship motos that we have seen so far today are about to unfold before our very eyes once more as it uh, looks like we've got a new third place ride and Frenchie may have made the pass. He has Gregory Palmer now in the number three position aboard the 58, Ev or 52, then the 58 of Evans is back in the number uh, four spot. And there we see the uh, 37, Tony LaRusso moving up a spot or two, and Robbie Skaggs is out there. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Wygant. We need to do a live shot back in the studio with that. We need to do that. Uh, I got my corner man, Kevin Kelly, help me get through. It's been a long got a minute and a half break. <laughs> Give me the – spreading that massive amount of Vaseline in the face and spraying water Cutting. in the mouth in between rounds in this boxing match. <laughs> So, wow, 
Jason Wygant continues to receive his pampering here in the tower. Thank we'll, you. <laughs> we will turn our attention back to the battle on the racetrack, and that's the one for fourth place right now with Evans being challenged by the 37 of LaRusso. As we saw them come by moments ago, there was only 1.3 seconds that separated them. Robbie Skaggs right behind LaRusso, the board, the number 45, but I believe it's become the LaRusso-Evans battle now for fourth as we roll back over around the uh, short shoots and actually now out into Storyland. Halfway through the story, I guess we reach the climax there as we are heading for the ending now. Evans still in the number four position as Palmer stretches things out some five seconds. The gap, uh, actually the lap times, look at this, 153.657. We're getting way down there now as uh, Robbie Raynard has really pumped off a fast lap time. We're looking at a uh, 159.144 for James Pavoni. And looking at lap times earlier in the week, remember, I think that, uh, yeah, Aaron Plessinger turned a 154.064 was his fastest lap. Look at that, a 153.420 is what uh, Robbie Rayner just capped off in a bet 35 plus class. And uh, right now he is looking at lap times as fast as what LaCurcio was turning in yesterday's uh, 450B limited class. The fastest lap so far, 152.9. Second fastest, a 153.5. And uh, look at that. Actually, now Robbie Rayner has the second fastest lap of the week only by tenths of a second here. Five tenths, a half a second is what we'll call it right here. So, wow, amazing that Raynard is able to pull up that kind of speed out here. It is a freshly groomed racetrack after intermission, but still, regardless of any of the conditions, that's pretty amazing for a 35-year-old guy, I think. Yeah, these guys aren't slowing down a bit. And at this level, we were mentioning before in our 50cc classes, it's almost bizarre to hear that riders as young as six or seven years old have coaches and trainers and riding facilities that they go to day in and day out. The riders in these classes often do work real jobs, so the level of fitness, you never know exactly what you're going to get. I know our buddy Jimmy Evans here on the 58 Kawasaki has uh, spent years working for the UPS, and he tries his best to turn slinging boxes at 3 o'clock on a hot summer afternoon into his training. So most of these guys work jobs, so you never know where the fitness is exactly going to be, but they have been pretty impressive. I guess when you got this kind of experience and they know how to ride the motorcycle right, probably prevents them from wasting any energy out there. And a good job uh, by Evans trying to battle his way into the number two position as Rainer continues to lead. Top five in this VET 30 plus class, 35 plus class are all sub two minutes. 158, 222 for LaRusso in fifth. Jamie Evans, a 158, 833 in fourth. Palmer a 158.827 in the number three spot. Pavoni a 159.614 in the number two spot. Raynard a 156.124 backing up that 153.420. He turned at his fastest lap on lap three. There's Raynard by the finish line and the uh, Under Armour Studios now as he wraps up lap number four. Pavoni some 13, almost 13 and a half seconds behind at the end of lap number three. At the end of lap four, he's now 17 seconds back. But Palmer, more importantly, has Closed up quite a bit of that gap. Now, what it was a near five second gap or better is only 3.8 seconds, and he's turning about eight tenths of a second faster lap. Again, that doesn't add up to a lot, but we gotta look at the big picture here. If Palmer can run consistently at that level over Pavoni in this juncture of the race, we could see another one of those uh, exciting finishes down to the wire, this time maybe for second, but regardless, uh, every little bit counts out here on Loretta Lenz race course. I don't even know what I'm looking at here, Kevin Kill. I can't understand that. The kids have been taken over by aliens or something. <laughs> so Pavoni still going to do everything he can. Needs some bad luck out of Raynard if something were to go bad for Robbie. There's our man Tony Wank on the number 69. Happy birthday to the man who's uh, spending his time on Vendor's Row with uh, Weisco. And also I was a guest of, with uh, him on Pit Pass Radio. That's his show. Uh, coming out of the uh, Illinois area, and good job by him. He's qualifying, and then he probably got his hands full working. Oh, so yeah. On the well, we notorious got number 69. And we go back to uh, Palmart here on the 52. He's been good with the starts this week and hoping to maybe put it up on the podium in the moto and overall. He's just being edged out by Jimmy Evans right now. 
So, Raynard, Pavoni, Palmer, Evans, LaRusso, your top five, still below the two minute mark, as low as 157 for LaRusso and Evans. Skaggs in six. Sam Yanatelli, who comes into this uh, final moto with a uh, nine and 11 score, is currently running in seventh. Dennis Dooley, the 83 in eighth. Edward Walston, the 11 is ninth. John Bolin is 10th. Now looking 11 through 20 at the four lap mark. We got John Age in 11th, Carl Scott back in 12th, Philip Hayes is 13th, Brandon Jones in 14th, Jeffrey Pape in 15th, Tony Wink is 16th, Clint Frank in 17th, Tommy Boyd 18th, Frank Echo is 19th, Jeremy Tiffany rounds out your top 20. Something interesting, the 69 that we were watching in that shot a few moments ago, uh, not only were we able to wish that rider a happy birthday and talk a little bit about him, but, uh, you know, he was uh, caught up in uh, a little bit of that battle for the fourth place position with Evans and LaRusso. And what I'm getting at is the fact that the top four are already deep into the top 20 overall as far as uh, a better lap. Wink running 16th was uh, right there with those guys. And uh, it's amazing the difference in speed and amongst those top five as maybe some of the rest of the VET 35 plus class out here. Well, I mentioned these are the classes that do not have an A, B, or C designation. So you really run the gamut from a rider like Raynard, who has won races at the very, very, very highest level of the game on any given day in his prime. You could make the argument that he was the fastest rider in the world. Then you're racing against the workaday guys. Like we said, their goal is just to qualify for Loretta's. They probably work full-time jobs. They've never been able to ride day in and down and test motorcycles as a professional. So they're all mixed in in one class here. Ex-pro riders are probably going to be the fastest, and they are. When you talk about Raynard, Pavoni up front, they both race pro nationals. You get the other guys out here who are weekend warriors, dads. I don't think they're quite granddads yet in this division, but you can get up there when we get to our older age groups. So uh, here's Raynard. Still likes to moto down, runs a racetrack, and trains a lot of the top riders from the Oklahoma area. Nowadays, still working with Justin Bogle, who is this year's 250 East Region Supercross champ. And did I not see Raynard actually take his hands off the bar yeah. entering that corner? Was he uh, trying to get some blood flowing there, or was he just stretching out, maybe shooting somebody a, a wave off to the side of the track? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, arm pump, sometimes an issue, but usually later in the week he's a little bit better as far as that's concerned. Hey, battle on our hands with Evans and Palmart. He's gotten around him. It looks like Palmart has made the pass on Evans. He'd been working on him for quite some time actually. And now it looks like Evans is trying to strike back is exactly what's going on here. Evans has won himself a couple of titles here, I believe in the 25 plus division. Going after it right now Whoa. and makes it. Man, a little mistake there by Paymer as uh, it is almost a gimme situation for Jimmy Evans, but you can bet your bottom dollar that this battle is not over. These two have been going at it since lap number one, Jason. And you know, it would be likely possibly to see these guys doing the same thing when the checker flies after 20 minutes of this. Quick swipe of the tear-offs there for the 58 of Evans out of Pennsylvania. Pamert there in the Yamaha, but lost a little bit of ground. And Tony LaRusso is in this fight also. See him in the number 37 Suzuki, the 41 rider. is about to go a lap down. But uh, LaRusso, the longtime sand specialist from up in New England, who just a few years ago was still pulling down top 20s in the Pro National there at the Wick, and that's 338. And a longtime Suzuki rider, I believe, as well, is LaRusso. And uh, sad story there. He mentioned on the podium earlier in the week that he actually lost his wife uh, a couple of months ago. So he's doing this one for her and really making her proud, putting in some great rides here on the number 37. One of the good guys, Tony LaRusso. And he's chasing down Evans. So wow. He's have a battle. These guys just don't give up. He's not going to relinquish that position too easily, I don't believe. He fought too far back from that first moto with a fifth-place finish and a third-place finish in moto number two, and he's uh, starting to feel it again. You know, he's he's thinking about it. He's, he's tasting, and he knows he's only moments away from making something like that happen. And right now, it's going to take getting around Evans in order to get a third-place overall position, not only on the podium for this uh, third and final moto. Pretty cool, the, uh, Evans. It's kind of one of those lifelong amateur type guys. Didn't race a ton at the pro level. Uh, did every once in a while, I believe, did earn a, a, a professional number in the two digit range at one point. Now he's trying to split the lap riders. He's got LaRusso going to duck to the inside, try to make it happen. Ah, there we go. We got some of the uh, tweets here that we're seeing on our screen. Some fans commenting on how long Raynard raced. Yeah, he came out of Loretta's 
1994, I believe he turned pro in the middle of that summer. And uh, so we're looking at almost 20 years since Rayner turned pro. At Cole Seeley says yeah. lots of memories at Loretta. It's crazy how the track has changed over the years. And that's true. Very true. As we watch these riders like LaRusso work his way through this section, trying to uh, track down Evans. Anyway, the cool deal on Evans, uh, hadn't raced a ton as a pro. Spent most of his time racing at Loretta's. And then a few years ago, after he had finally notched that 25-plus championship here, he said, you know what? I'm signing up. I'm racing the Steel City National. I'm just going to see what I got at the pro level before I'm too old to get it done. Pulled a good start. Think he got himself like a 13th. That scored some points. Had to skip Loretta's the next year as far as uh, racing in the age classes because you essentially disqualify yourself. But uh, just wanted to give it a shot before it was too late. You get the other guys like LaRusso here on the 37, or Raynard, and Pavoni also is in second. They raced for perf as pros forever. And then as soon as the day came where they were eligible to come back here, uh, guys like Raynard did. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the memories that they have here, they wanted to relive them again. Pretty amazing, actually, I, I believe, that uh, what kind of a hook this place has on you. I was thinking about it myself, but it was uh, 1995. will be uh, 20 year, my 20-year reunion next year, I guess, of uh, coming to Loretta Lens. And over the course of time, uh, just like uh, Cole said, you know, I can't believe how much Loretta's has changed. Uh, think about it over the course of 20 years, how much this place has changed, man. I mean, pretty amazing thing. I remember... We used to run it one way one year and then turn it around and run it backwards the next year, keep the same jumps, just uh, reface them in a different direction. It was uh, a lot of changes back then, but even more since then. And right now, one of the biggest changes is, to me, the depth of talent in these plus classes, like this VET 35 plus class, because we've seen and had the opportunity for a lot of the uh, former talents of Loretta Lenz to go on, have their professional careers, and then come back like we have alluded to on so many different occasions. And I think that's one of the things that has helped the depth of uh, talent in the plus classes from the 25 plus, the 30, the 35, the 40, even the 45 and 50 plus. Riders from the days gone by have the opportunity to return after a uh, professional career. And that's that's what's great about, one of the great things about Loretta Lenz, and another great thing is, is that uh, we have the opportunity to bear witness to them all, and right now we're witnessing the 23 machine of James Pavoni. Jen Ken has found her 172nd different place to sit and try to work <laughs> on her laptop here in this <laughs> Under Armour studio. Now she's out in the corner. Uh, Pavoni has never won a title here at Loretta. He's come close the last couple of years as a uh, vet rider. But uh, going to come up short to Rainer. Nothing to be ashamed of there. Uh, Robbie's talent certainly still impressive. And like we said, Robbie still gets to ride and train a lot, I would assume. I know he's working with riders and owns a racetrack down in Oklahoma. Sometimes that ends up costing you time on the bike because you got to work with the kids. Pavoni actually has got a desk job as the white flag is now out. He works for uh, Fly and Western Power Sports now. So he's representing his companies and still showing he can go pretty fast on a dirt bike. That LaRusso-Evans battle is actually going to shake up the overall podium. It could put LaRusso into third overall and push Evans back to fourth. And Greg Pamart would be fifth overall if it ends like this. So we'll see if Evans can, can try to strike back. And they're under the Red Bull Peristyle arch. It's really just an arch. And then a long short shoot, which Wes Kane will be ripping up, autographing, and placing in your front yard. He's actually in this put it in his teeth, <laughs> walk home with that section of the track in his mouth, drop it in your front yard. Autograph sections of the track, one of the innovations here. You want a piece of the action, literally, at the ranch. Here's Raynard. And uh, his dad still there wrenching for him. I thought that was pretty cool. Robert Raynard, senior, still the mechanic, just like he was back in the pro days. So they got to feel good. And doing it on the Yamaha, we were talking to Donnie Luce, who runs the Yamaha amateur program. And uh, he said they're hoping to go back to back, have the PW champ, have a little break <laughs> for intermission, and then come back with a veteran champion on a 450. So showing the full range. I had the opportunity to, to host the Blue Crew family dinner there last evening. And uh, I've done that for the past few years, Jason. And last night, I, I have to admit, was probably one of the more uh, over 
overwhelming ones for me because though we've always seen a lot of the Blue Crew family here and a lot of uh, Yamaha family members come to dinner, last night just seemed to be so many more than uh, the, the last few years. And uh, it, it was a great turnout. They gave away a big Yamaha power washer as uh, Robbie Skaggs gets the checker flag handed to him. Rainer, bro. Rainer. What did I say? Skaggs. Oh, well, I meant Raynard. That's what I meant. <laughs> I only corrected you because I called uh, Nathan Sk Robbie Skaggs Nathan Skaggs earlier, so <laughs> I know what it's, it's like. It's easy to do. It really is. Yes. But, but uh, yes, Robbie Raynard taking the win there, and uh, uh, he was a part of that Yamaha Blue Crew and that family dinner there last evening, and uh, I, I just uh, am amazed at uh, where Yamaha – I was looking at one of the championship trophies down there in the Yamaha pits. It said – had uh, Yamaha – Champions right in, 19, in 1991, I think Jeff Gibson and one other rider had won championships on Yamahas, and that was in the PW class. In 1992, David Whitcraft was the only champion in, in 1992 on a Yamaha. But since then, the names have grown, and the last couple of years has expanded. And this year, I can only imagine how big. They're probably going to have to have two nameplates for 2014, the way the championships are breaking down. Speaking of championships, this moto, Robbie Rayner taking the win. James Pavoni will hold on for three straight seconds. And Tony LaRusso will go 5-3-3 on the week for his uh, second straight third. Uh, and then we've got uh, James Evans and Gregory Palmer rounding out the top five. As far as the overall goes, it's Rayner. Pavoni and LaRusso, one, two, and three. Cliff Nobles has delivered me unmarked food product. I don't even know. Is that a chocolate pie? What I got here, so I'm just going to have it. And we're going to do this live on the air. And if it's not good, or if it is good, you'll hear the live reaction. Oh, it's pretty good. I'll tell you that. That looks right like there. blueberry right <laughs> there. <laughs> Did you well get that up there, up there at the Amish, folks? Yeah, go right back behind us, behind GoPro, under the Red Bull tent. And they got a lot of good food for sale. We had to send it down to the podium. Uh, with Wes Kane. I sure hope Wes is still there. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Is. Yep, you can still count the two, too. Hey, uh, we're still waiting on our shield. One of the mini riders picked up, uh, Pee Wee rider picked up our shield and accidentally took it off the podium. We made contact with you and acknowledge that you have it. If you could please bring it back to the podium, we would appreciate it. That shield is for picture purposes only. You'll get one at the final ceremonies. The number one plate is there for you to keep. All right, let me get our third place finisher in event 35, Tony LaRusso. Come on up here. We got a bronze medal for you. Hey, Tony LaRusso. Hey, Tony. How you doing, bud? Good to see you, man. Thanks, thanks. It's good being here, having a lot of fun, racing with some of the old guys uh, that I've raced with years ago, you know? So uh, it's been cool. James made that uh, moto. He gave me a couple little gifts. He tipped over a couple times, so... That helped out, but uh, either way, it was uh, it was a good race. Tell me how it feels. You got a bronze medal down here. It's got to feel good to come back, to, yeah, come down to the ranch. Yeah, it's awesome. I, you know, like I said, I haven't been here since I was like 13, so it's been a long time. But uh, it's great to always stand up here. So, who do you want to thank? I just want to thank my, you know, my daughter for helping me out. <coughs> um, all my sponsors: Dunlop, Factory Connection, Troy Lee Designs, uh, CTMotocross.com. That's my track back home and uh, Smith Goggles, and there's a Garnet Boots, there's a whole bunch of them, Yoshimir for hooking me up with a pipe, but uh, I don't know, pretty happy. Congratulations out there. Hey guys, give it up one time for Tony LaRusso. Congratulations, Tony. And now our second place competitor, finisher, we're gonna give him the Bell Helmets $100 whole shot award and a silver medal. Come on up here, James Pavoni. There you go right here, James, front and center. You grab that check, hold it up. I'm going to outfit you with a silver medal. A little medal of honor for you. Congratulations. There it is. James Pavoni, get a snapshot. Bell Helmets, $100 whole shot award. James Pavoni, great job out there. Tell us all about it. Well, I uh, finally got the whole shot that eluded me all week. The last couple of years, I was whole shotting right off the beginning, but I guess... Save the best for the end. I thought uh, the way they groomed the track, I'd get out there and sprint ahead of Robbie, but man, he got by me and the guy can just lay down some fast laps. So I just did what I could, tried to ride smart and bring it home in second. Who, else, who do you want to thank for your success? Always give the glory to God. I got to thank my whole team, my whole crew, wife, kids, my dad's here. Uh, great to, to have them here with me. Tom's aunt. 
build my motors and suspension. We thought at the beginning this KTM 350 was going to hurt on the starts, but other than the one uh, earlier today that I was sleeping on, I was up in the front every time. So big thanks to him for in uh, KTM, Woodstock KTM, uh, Fly Racing WPS for sure. Uh, Hammer Nutrition, Pirelli Tires, tires are working awesome, uh, FMF, Dragon Goggles, Lucas Oil, Throttle Jockey, uh, Garnet Boots, uh, Cherubies, just everybody that helps me out, Brap Supply, hooking me up with these sweet lids while I'm up here <laughs> talking to you, Wes, you need a Brap hat, <laughs> but uh, just everybody who helps me out, I appreciate it, and uh, thanks to all these guys who are racing clean, good fun, so it's a lot of fun. Good to have you out here, James Boney, also out there working with Fly. You're not only up here racing, you're up here getting whole shots, but you're a whole crew of kids out there that you're also checking in with your a Fly Amateur Support Program. Yeah, this is just a perk to get to ride and uh, especially get up here and uh, be able to do well. It's, I was talking to Robbie earlier, that man, the grind from last week and this week with all the gear and everything. Rod was here with me last year. Uh, it, it takes its toll, but, man, I wouldn't. I'll go out there tired. I don't care. It's fun to be able to go out here and race and uh, do well and have fun. Love riding dirt bikes. So There you go. Congratulations out there. Job well done. Give it up one time. James Pavoni, Bell Whole Shot Award winner and gold silver medal recipient. Now, your champion, Vet 35, all the way from Oklahoma. Come on up here, Robbie Raynard. You're going to get the gold medal. Kip Bigelow with that number one plate. Great job out there. Get it up high one time. Robbie Raynard. Congratulations, Robbie. Job well done. They gave you a run for your money. Tell me about it. Yeah, you know, I, I know I needed to get a start out there and try to get away, you know, because I'm struggling a little bit at the end of the moto. The wrist gets pretty sore and numb. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had, just went out there, and the track was actually really good, you know. So I uh, put a couple good fast laps in, and, you know, I wanted to – Pit one fast one down so I could uh, pit it to the little boys that uh, train with me. You know, so, you know, next year y'all got to pick it up. Yeah, I see you over there uh, putting the word out to Colt Humphreys over there. I, I don't think it's Colt Humphrey, but Colt Nichols. Yeah, that's right, Colt Nichols. You probably rode with Humphreys before, too. Yep. Anyway, who do you want to thank? Well, I got to thank my uh, parents for, uh, you know, spending their anniversary again with uh, me at the races and everything. And uh, Ashley, Yamaha. GYTR, Yamalube, Fox, Scott, Roost, Fenton Motors, Wichita Electric, uh, Rainer Modification Pro Circuit. You know, I couldn't do it with all, you know, everybody out there. You know, it's just great to be out here and have some fun and uh, enjoy it with everybody. Well, I'm going to let you enjoy this championship here. I've got a bottle of champagne that says you're the champ on it. Come on, guys, get in there and congratulate Vet 35 champion Robbie Raynard.